I can bring a UK perspective um, on the topic of cross-regulatory cooperation. There are many different varieties, uh, and it's, they're all essential. Uh, data knows no boundaries. It doesn't respect jurisdictional limits, either within country or internationally. Uh, the titans of the digital economy uh, are operating in every country, and it's a very um, uh, difficult matter to um, bring them to heel in a consistent way, not assisted by the fact that the laws are not 100% consistent in all jurisdictions as well. But um, it, it starts, I think, uh, at the uh, bilateral level that I can have conversations with my colleagues. I have memoranda of understanding with each organisation represented at this table, except for Colin's one. Um, and those are really important as a, um, establishing, in principle, the importance of regular conversation and acknowledging uh, the value and importance of sharing information, either at a general policy level uh, or at a, um, an enforcement level. And um, Philippe already mentioned the um, enforcement cooperation that we're doing uh, uh, in relation to an investigation of a breach at uh, 23 and Me. Uh, we also uh, work with colleagues in other jurisdictions around the world. For example, we had a joint investigation against Clearview with um, the Office of um, the Australian Information Commissioner. Uh, and that, I think, was really important. We have you know, quite different regulatory approaches. We're on different sides of the world. Uh, but common uh, concerns about the impact of uh, that service, that platform, uh, on the privacy of the citizens of our two countries. There are many um, multilateral fora for us to come together and cooperate and collaborate, um, and those are very valuable in flushing out common issues, such as how we deal with AI, such as how we deal with uh, children's privacy. Um, we have the G7, for example, uh, which uh, will this year be chaired by uh, Italy. Uh, we'll, the data protection authorities will come together um, with my colleagues at the, uh, at the table here uh, and others to um, have a think about how we approach these issues in a coherent way. And because we're just a small, agile group of seven, it means that we can uh, come up with positions which are then of value in larger multilateral groupings, such as the Global Privacy Assembly. Uh, when we think about enforcement cooperation, um, those larger multilateral groupings are also important. So at the Global Privacy Assembly, which is all the privacy commissioners and information commissioners and data protection authorities uh, around the world, or most of them, Denise, um, uh, we can try and create the, um, the frameworks for in practice cooperation. And my colleague Brent Homan, who's in the audience here, when he was with the Office of the Privacy Commissioner in Canada, worked with the ICO to develop the cooperation framework and handbook. And that's been incredibly valuable. So that's a kind of off-the-shelf product that data protection authorities can reach for uh, when it comes to um, cooperating on the ground, as it were. The sort of cross-jurisdictional issues within country are becoming more and more pressing. Uh, and uh, both Ulrich and Philippe have talked about the importance of um, working closely with our competition uh, regulatory authorities. In the UK, we have an organisation which I think uses most of the same letters as your acronym, Philippe, the DRCF. Yours was the... CDRF. CDRF. The DRCF is the Digital Regulators Cooperation Forum, and it consists of um, the ICO... Uh, Ofcom, the Communications Regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, and the Competition and Markets Authority. And that's a way in which we can identify cross-cutting issues that touch each uh, regulatory regime. Uh, and we are really interested in ensuring that there's a coherent approach to emerging technologies, for example, like AI. And the DRCF has been funded to provide a um, digital hub so for innovators who are wanting to bring products to market and want to understand how the different regulators will, uh, will address it, they can come into a kind of sandbox environment and get coordinated advice. And I think that's going to be uh, quite important. The Competition and Markets Authority um, and the ICO will be issuing a joint statement on foundation models uh, later in the year. Uh, and that's really important as well 
in sending signals to the market that there should be no space between the regulators, that the values of one regulatory regime, which is there for the benefit of consumers, should not be played off against the values of the other, which is also there to protect uh, consumers and rights. Um, and another area that we've worked in that is um, co cooperating around the Google privacy sandbox. Uh, work with Ofcom is really important. You'll be aware of the Online Safety Act, which passed last year, uh, and which um, uh, regulates the kinds of content that can be delivered to, um, uh, to uh, across platforms. Now, many of you will be aware of the tragic case of Molly Russell, uh, a young woman who took her own life um, after seeing all sorts of increasingly distressing uh, content delivered to her through social media platforms. Uh, now, when we try and address an issue like that, um, there is the matter of the content which is being delivered, which is um, a, a regulatory matter for the communications regulator. Uh, so the actual content that appears on the screen is, a, is an Ofcom matter. But the underlying data which uh, recommends and drives that is based on uh, expressed or inferred preferences, that is a data protection matter. So it's really important that we come together um, with Ofcom to ensure that we have a coordinated approach. Uh, we are issuing, in fact, a call for evidence uh, because like um, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner in Canada, uh, children's privacy remains a really important priority uh, for us. And it's, it's another area, I think, in which we've shown that international uh, cooperation and collaboration can improve the environment for children online all around the world, not just within our jurisdiction. So our age-appropriate design code has been tremendously influential. We've worked with our colleagues in uh, California and elsewhere in the world to try and ensure that those standards of privacy by default for children, um, geolocation switched off by default, are available uh, around the world.